Suffering. Is suffering that hard to flesh out? Is there any way to bring an end to suffering? If we realize that we are, first and foremost, an awareness, clean, pure, unidentified, unassociated, unattached, non-indulged, and that if we stay present in this ever-present awareness, avoiding all desires, passions, temptations, enticements, defilements, expressions, repressions, and emotional outlets, then no disturbances of any kind will be able to shake us from this clear, silent, empty observation. Not pain, not pleasure, not sadness, nor happiness, nor excitement, nor boredom, or anything else in the wide repertoire of human feelings. We must come to see that it's okay to become disconnected from humanity, the things that make us human. Because, after all, none of these things that we associate and attach to being human are what we are. We are not human. A human is a mere disguise, a mask, a dream construct that awareness, what we ultimately are, is masquerading as. If you feel like continuing with this charade, by all means do so. Have at it. Really get to know and be this idea of being a human being. But if you are compelled to do so, then you are wasting your time trying to escape suffering, the undesirable, the pain, the loneliness, and everything else we have deemed bad or to be avoided. There is no way to fix the human experience. It is what it is. You gotta take the good with the bad. This is the essence of duality, the human playing field, whose rules must be obeyed to be a human being. There is no way around it. If you wish to indulge in distinctions, then you must accept two sides of the coin. And while true that one need not have cancer to enjoy an afternoon stroll in the park, the risk of such extremes are nevertheless possible. It all depends on the condition of a given awareness that has decided to invest in this game. All things in this spectrum are here to benefit us and lead us to complete liberation, the freedom from all things. Beyond awareness, everything else is expendable and disposable. No matter how much pain and suffering one endures, no matter what kind of death one meets, in the end, after change and transcendence, all these things will be stripped away. The awareness will not be damaged, scarred, broken, or suffering in the slightest bit. Just like when you wake up from a nightmare. This is a state worth becoming grounded in. But for so long as there is unfinished business, lingering desire, attachment, and compulsion, Awareness will be lured back again and again to the deluded state to chase and pursue these imaginations until they work themselves out. That being said, there are surely still questions and justifications for suffering. So let's go through some of this stuff. A life free from suffering, is it worth wanting? Well, we can answer that question by answering another question. Becoming lucid in a dream, is that worth wanting? Do medicine and technology do an injustice by alleviating suffering? 
Certainly. Because they are only dealing with symptoms, and they are not addressing the root of the suffering. Can suffering be offered as a hymn or a shaping stone of self-cultivation? What is it that you possibly think that you're cultivating into? Are we building character? Well, that's all well and fine, but any character that is built is not what we ultimately are. So ultimately, you are only lingering in further delusion. A dream character is just a dream character. You can be an insect, an animal, a fish, a human being, an extraterrestrial, or even a god. But if you are not lucid in your dream, you are in dream delusion. What about the many different ways of dealing with suffering? To deal with something means that you are accepting it as a default. And then it just becomes a question of how to manage it. Why bother? Detach from it. Then there will be nothing to deal with or manage. What about different types of suffering? How does that play into the mix? We can have slightly disturbing nightmares or we can have extremely disturbing nightmares. Point being, we are still subject to nightmares. If only we would become lucid, then all nightmares would vanish. Can we find effective ways at alleviating suffering? Again, why all the avoidance at just simply waking up and becoming lucid? An inside participant is subject to suffering. An outside observer is not subject to suffering. So it would seem that the best way to alleviate suffering is to become an outside observer. Once we are observing from the outside, there will be nothing to alleviate. What about using suffering to joyfully participate in the sorrows of man? Whatever that means. We can participate as much as we want in a dream. But if we are not lucid in a dream, we are missing out. Only when we become lucid do we realize that all the participations were just a silly delusion. Is suffering inevitable? For one who is an inside participant, lost in the distracting delusion, it most certainly is. You can scramble around as much as you like, trying to find different ways of alleviating it, dealing with it and managing it. But for so long as we are chasing desire and clinging to attachments, Suffering will always be inevitable. This is the same as asking if we do heroin, is withdrawal inevitable? Can we make our suffering a contribution to the world? What are you contributing to other than a dream delusion? There's nothing to build, there's nothing to gain, there's nothing to preserve. It all adds up to a big nothing. No matter what happens, it's all going to come to an end. And awareness will continue on. So why become attached to it and suffer needlessly? Better just to detach and observe it all. What about the ways people use suffering in a meaningful way? Such as, for example, the suicide bomber. Or one who endures suffering to create art or to bring about social change. Again, these are all things that only matter to those who are caught up playing the game.
There are many different things men can do to try to make suffering meaningful. He can fight for his rights. He can create great masterpieces of art. He can kill each other. But really, what's it all going to amount to? This is all going to vanish. Why struggle needlessly? Never mind what's going on on the exterior. This is all just a reflection of what's interior. You are projecting this, just like a projector in the movie theater. Getting caught up in the movie and thinking that the movie is what we are is the delusion. Real insight comes from discovering how that movie is manifested. There is absolutely nothing that can go on in the movie that is worth the pain and suffering. That is to say, to remain ignorant and unaware. What it amounts to is cheap thrills and hard pains. Special effects. Masturbation. What about enduring suffering for growth? The idea that to grow a self worth wanting, one must painfully shed a skin like a snake. This can be true only if it means that it leads to lucidity. If it means growing into some kind of different character within the dream, it's all just a waste of time. And this is the only useful purpose suffering actually has to compel people to wake up.